For me, gender research uh, really hit home when I was doing uh, research in West Africa on rice uh, as, a, as a commodity. Uh, and this was about 20 years ago. And it was right when gender research was first being explored and, and trying to understand how what the implications might be. And for, for us, the aha moment came when we were doing participatory uh, selection of rice varieties. And they tried an innovation of having a women's group versus a men's group do a evaluation of these different varieties. And the men said, oh yeah, these short varieties, very productive, we like them, they're great, we love them. The women group came and looked at the, these short, very short varieties, and they said, no, we won't plant those. Kills our back, because we're the ones who have to harvest the damn things. And bingo! <laughs> there was a major, just a clear signal as to what would be the future of that of those short varieties. And so, giving, allowing a a uh, a choice, a range of of heights of variety was already um, a, a clear implication that nobody had thought of, because they were just thinking about the productivity in the game. Now, since I've been at Ilry, uh, we've been doing gender research on and off over the years um, and have, a, have had a good solid record of, of a number of, of case studies. But we have, it's always been focused on more the social gender aspects. And we have not been able to integrate that into what does it mean for our technologies? How can our technologies be smarter? How can our approaches to introducing livestock interventions be smarter? Uh, and to me, that's, that's the challenge we still face, is, is getting some kind of example that demonstrates to our scientists why it is worth their while to think about these gender issues. Um, and we just we haven't found that example that hits home. Uh, but we will. <laughs>